This is Mike from Minimal 3DP, and today I'm continuing my build of my Voron 2.4 R2 Pro Plus from Formbot. So let's go ahead and get started. I have the manual open, and I've completed the build of the Z drivers. I still need to do the motors. Let's take a look at this. So I've built the boxes, the Z drive, and then in the next step, I'm actually putting together the stepper motors. Let's take a look at my desk cam. As you can see, I've completed all four of these. Now, the one change I did make, which is in the direction since I put the feet on, there was a nut underneath here that kept falling out. I couldn't get to with it on. So I just put the feet on so that way it's all holding everything together. So this is all set up. And as I said, the next step here is to put the NEMA 17 stepper motors together. I did print out one of the little tools here, measurement tool. See that over here on the right side in the directions. And this is pretty handy because this lets me make sure that these pulleys are properly placed. So let's put the stepper motors together. Let me go find those pieces and I'll be right back. I found the motors. And one of the things I want to do real quickly here is let's just check these model numbers. This ends in 420105. This one's the same thing. Same and same. I'm doing that because there's a total of six stepper motors with this kit. And I just want to make sure that I am picking the right motors just in case there is a difference. I've done the Mercury build in the past, and that actually did have some different stepper motors. And so, again, just want to make sure everything's the same. It's always good to double check. Now let me see if I can find the pulleys, so I'll be right back. Now going back to the idea of double checking things, one of the things I've noticed is this kit has a two G2 20 tooth pulleys, not to be confused with the ones I need, which are the two G2 16 tooth. And let's just verify that by taking a quick look at the manual. And you can see right down here, 16 tooth. And the shape all looks the same, so that looks right. The one thing I am noticing here, so I'll have to be careful, is these nuts are all loose. So I want to be very careful when I dump this out right here. And I don't want to lose some nuts because I'll need that to hold these in. So let's take a look at the directions again. So here's the Z right here. And slip this on like it needs to go upside down and see it's actually pretty neat how that holds that in so let me get my driver here and i have to figure out where i put it with that so let's start screwing these in i want to make sure this these go into the flat part here on the stepper at least one needs to go on the flat side Get those started. I'm going to just look in here, get them so they're barely through. That way I don't have to screw around too much. Go. Now, going back to my measurement tool, I'm going to turn the flat side so it's facing me so I can see it. Slip this in. Again, one of the screws sitting on the flat side. Let's see if I can hold this. There's one screw. It's nice and tight. Let's just make sure when I look at this. And it looks like I did get it on there a little too far. Let's so just loosen this up and I'll get that readjusted there. I forgot to apply thread locker, so I'm just gonna pull out a piece of paper here and put a little thread locker paper. So I can dip the nuts in it. I probably need to buy some more thread locker. So let me undo these and I should have read the directions a little bit more carefully. Something else I pointed out to a friend when I started this build 
I saw how well everything was documented. I was pretty excited. What I did not look at more carefully was the fact that the build guide or the assembly manual for the Voron is 200 and some plus pages. It's a little bit of a mistake on my part. I didn't actually look at that. And it's sort of part of the course for me. I'm getting a little thread locker on here. Measuring this out and just tighten it. And last twist seems to move it down a little bit. I need that thread locker on here. When I read the reviews, not just of the kit, but the Voron in general, getting these pulley positions tends to be one of the problems where these don't sit right and get messed up. I apologize. I'm just going over here to get my rag so I can wipe that off. So, as you can see, I have all the Pulleys attached, they're all spaced appropriately. Now, for my next step, I go over here to my display. It looks like I need to secure a printed piece, need to orient this appropriately. Let me go find this printed piece and we'll get started with that. So I found my pieces right here. Now it looks like, let's look at the drawing here, that these need to be oriented something like this. So these pieces need to be oriented like this, with the connection on the side. I'm just going to put this like this. I have my M3 eights, and let's put these in. I'm not going to do those too tight just yet. I'm just tightening them up now. And I don't want to crack the print, but I do want them at least a little tight. So that's the orientation. So let's set that like that. And let me do these other motors and I'll get these all screwed in, and then we can proceed to the next step. So I have these all screwed in, put together. Just, like I said, gonna keep proceeding to additional steps. So now I'm looking at the orientation of the legs so I can put the bottom on. Now, sort of looking like I'm interpreting this right. Little bit of gear is gonna be facing the outside. This is gonna be facing the outside find the specific side. Yeah, there we go. So this looks like what's pictured. So right now, what I'm going to do is flip the printer over. And let's move over to the printer and start trying to install these and see if we can get these installed and get the motors installed correctly. So right now, I'm looking at the bottom of the printer front back, back has the notch. And if I'm interpreting this correctly, the foot should be oriented something like this. These should all go something like this. Now, that looks correct. Now let's look at the directions. You can see how that's oriented. The printer oriented correctly, as you can see. It looks like I need to get some M5, M540s, and then I need some M5T nuts. So let's start that now. We're starting with the front. I'm looking at this. Let's switch over to my tripod. They're starting with this corner. So we're going to move everything down. It's not hanging out, and I'm starting over here with this corner. So I have that, I believe, oriented correctly. And let's get the T nuts and the M540. I've turned the printer. So this is the front, this is the back. And I'm trying to orient this as my directions are down here. So what I'm going to start with is let's take our M5 T nuts and slip those into place. And we'll get those situated in here. So these to me are always a pain in the butt to get in place. I always use it to sort of get them situated by the first one in. And I'll need to move these around once I get everything lined up. Going to 
the other two teeny nuts right here goes in. And what I'm gonna do is try to line these up. I'm just gonna hold this like this. I don't know if that's perfect, but at least that's start. So let's take, let's see if we can get this back one in first. And then have the one here. We might actually have to back out the foot a little bit, to get this down. So let me see if I can do that. I don't want to back this out too much. Let's see if we can get this screw to catch. So I have that in. Let's finish screwing in the foot here. That's tight. Okay. So we have that. Now let me reorient the printer so we can see it from the front. Right now, this is on and secure via these two M540s with the T-nuts. Let's reorient this so we can see the front and put on the stepper motor. So I've moved to the next page in my instructions and I need this stepper motor. So I want the L, the this arm, the L, away from the gear here. Slip this around. What I'm gonna to need to do is just move the T-nut over. And I'll probably need to use an Allen key to move this. Get those holes lined up and looks like we're lined in there now we don't need to tighten these so i'm looking for an m510 buttonhole so let's find that screw and get the first one started i found my m510s here and i'm just going to start with one so it looks like I'm just going to start this screw here oops I need to make sure I don't drop or lose screws. I'm pretty sure there's extras here, but this is not something I want to do is start losing things. I'm just starting that. So it says pretty clearly in the instructions, do not over tighten. We're just barely tightening that. Now, it looks like we actually have a little tightener piece. Let's look at the full screen of the direction so we can see it a little bit better. There's a little piece. Now, I'm also noticing this should be red. So I'm looking for this little lever-like piece. So let's see if we can find that. And I'll need four of those. I found my little lever pieces. And I want those with the little handle pointed up. I'll slip that in here. And it looks like I'm using that M510 again. Hopefully I have the T knot sort of lined up correctly. It feels like I do. Now, this also says don't over tighten. We're not going to over tighten. Let's look at the next step. And I'm reading this, it looks like we're going to close, we're going to close that lever and that's actually going to provide the tightening and then once we do probably tighten those screws down so after we close it we're going to tighten those screws and then it says to put on the rubber feet but we've already done that so let's look at my dual view here there we go i'm going to push this closed and then tighten the that's actually really clever way these tighten I like that actually feels really really tight and it seems to be spinning correctly so that's good let's start with the next footer and get that on now I want to real quickly check to make sure nothing shifted here everything still feels tight but this all seems to be square that's good now I'm going to do this corner over here on the other side let me move the camera so the recommendation according to the assembly guide is to do the opposing corner. So I'm just going on the diagonal. And it looks like this one right here. So let's just repeat this process. I'll do this one on camera and then won't do the rest. Do those off camera. I'm just slipping in my T-nuts here. I'm getting those in place. 
So I've moved everything around so we can see it a little bit better. I've moved everything around so we can see it a little bit better. Now we just need to get the motors on here and it should be oriented like this. Now we only want to put in the one M510. We're doing this hole right here. We're just barely putting that in. Then we're going to take our lever, flip that in here. And let's start the other hole. We don't want that too tight. Just close that. So with that closed, we're going to tighten up both screws. And this looks to be perfect. Nothing's moved here. Everything's down securely. So let me do the other feet off camera, and then I'll come back. So now I've installed all the feet. I have oriented correctly. I have the tension correct here. So I'm just going to start moving on to the next steps. Now, I'm not sure what ah, the Z idlers. So I'm going to need to look through my parts and find these. Now, for, for me, these look like angry little faces. Switch back over here. Yeah. The Z idlers again look like angry little faces. So let's find those pieces. And I assume I need four of these and put those together. Proceed with those steps. We have several screws and idlers we need to get out here. So first we're going to find the M3 nuts. So I'm just going to go through my parts here and find the M3 nuts. Let me find all the parts and I'll lay those out and come right back. So I've laid out all my parts. I have my M530s. M316s. These are button head. These are the standard head. And here's my M3 hex nuts. And then I also need these G2 20 tooth idlers. And those need to be nine millimeters wide, so that's correct. And we're going to start by these apart. And it looks like the T nut needs to go. I don't need to take these parts, not the T nut, but the M3 nut needs to go into the top here. Take those out, place those in, and placing it in all the tops here. I'm just pushing those in. And the screw will actually grab them. Now the M316s, where are they? It's right here. So let me get my driver ready, switch this out. I'm going to take the M316, go through the bottom here, and that's actually going to bite into hex nut there. So just tighten these. I'm not going to tighten them too much. I'm just making sure, just grabbing the end. My nuts back in the back here. I don't want to lose anything. Put those aside. I'll need two more of these. Take those out. Again, put this to the side. I'm trying to keep all the screws together. Not lose anything. And I mean, I'm not sure I've said it. I need to say it every video. The fact they labeled all these bags is beautiful. I mean, I, I'm not having, I'm having more trouble because there's a zillion bags finding anything than opposed to grabbing the wrong size. This has been super helpful and super handy. The fact that and everything's labeled well and just followed so far falls along perfectly with the instructions now i think at some point I'll maybe have supplementary instructions from formbot that i'll have to look at right now i'm not worried about that so got all those in and then let's get the idler situated let me look at those directions look at the directions looking at the idler looks like the tab is facing away from the button head. I'm not seeing a nut or anything holding this part in here. That's interesting. But let's look at that on my desk. And so the way I'm interpreting it is the tabs over here, the button head is away from the tab, this little bit here. We're going to go through here. This actually feels like it's biting into plastic. Maybe that's correct. I'm just putting the screw through till it's right to about there. The idler in place. This probably doesn't need a tight. I'm just twist. 
the idler moves. You can see the button head away from the tab. So let's do the same thing, this one here. So I'm just screwing in, getting the screw till it's just about out the hole here. Taking my idler, slipping that in, and just going all the way through with it. I really don't know how much in this build so far. As I said, I, I love the kit, I love the, the assembly manual. That works correct. Those button head away from the tab. Let me finish these two and I'll come right back. I have all the idlers together, making sure everything's spinning freely. And this. That all looks correct. Now let's install this on the frame. So I've reoriented my printer. This right here is the front. Back is over here. Taking the idler. This is going to fit something like this. And the tab here is actually going to fit into the extrusion. Now, something I need to do is I need to put in some of these M5 T nuts again, and I want to make sure those are facing the same direction so I don't have any problems with the spacing. Let's see if I can get these started. As I said I want these oriented the same way. Now, what I'm going to try to do is I want the angry face towards the middle of the printer. These need to use, we figure out what screws these need. These need the M530s, and those are button heads. So let's find the M530s button head. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with this out here and get these screws started, and then I'm going to push it into the corner. Of course, I can't get that one started. I'm not going to put those too tight. Loosen this a little bit. And then I want to push this over and snap it into the corner. So I've just heard it snap. Now I should be able to tighten this in. That's nice and tight. Everything's moving. So that's in that corner. Now I'm going to do the rest off camera and I'll be back in a second. So as you can see, I have the idlers all in. Those are looking really good. I have those in each corner. And now I think looking at the directions, that's the end of the section. So the next Part of the build, look over here, is going to be the print bed. So I'm going to pause and clean up my workspace and then prepare to work on the printed bed. I want to thank you for your time. If you have any questions or comments, please post below. Thanks. Have a good Hi, night. This is Mike from Minimal 3DP, and I want to thank you for joining me today. If you have any questions or comments, please post them below. If you need some additional help, I've also posted some links in the video description. You can set up a 15 minute help session with me and I'm more than happy to sit down with you and see if I can help you out. If you need some additional help, I'm also going to try doing one hour sessions for anybody that's interested. And like I said, I'm testing this stuff out. I want to thank you again for joining me and I look forward to talking to you again next time. Thanks. Have a good day. Bye.